and they're off. As they swing towards the straight, towards the first of the 14 flights to be jumped in this two and a half miler. And the lead as they turn in is with Doyen to win and Kevin Sexton. As they make the run towards the first flight, Doyen to win with Luda Talen just not a fraction on landing on the inside, disputing second with Fox LaBelle and Crimson Chief on the outside, the big white face of Champagne Vacation as they jump flight number two. And again, all safely over. Racing in sixth is hit the button in front of the light blue jacket of Cruz and Susan with Definite Adair in the black and white star jacket on the outside of King Gressel in the change of colours there, the blue and white stripes, followed at the back to Scalino and the back marker is Legacy of Dreams. So on to flight number two and over it. Fluent jump in front by Doyen to win. Lands with a lead of a couple of lengths. Over racing in second is Luda Tillen who's on the inside of Crimson Chief and Fox LaBelle, followed towards the outer by Champagne Vacation, ahead of Hit the Button, as they continue the run towards flight number, th flight number four. Behind Hit the Button races King Gressel, who's in front of Cruz and Susan, on the inside of Definite Adair, who's lost its early pitch. The back two are Scalino and Legacy of Dreams. So, quite a well strung out field, head into the back straight and head towards flights four and five, with Doyen to win. Keen in front for Kevin Sexton, leads by about 8 to 10 lengths. From Crimson Chief, races second on the outside of Lou de Tillen. A couple of lengths then to Fox the Bell 4, a length to Champagne Vacation, the top weight in 5. Another length then to hit the button as the chasing group just begin to tighten up a bit more, followed by King Gressel, Cruz and Susan on the inside of Definite Adair. A length and a half to Scalino and the back marker as they jump. Flight number 5 continues to be Legacy of Dreams. On to number six, and Doyen to win. Again, fluent, over it, lands about slightly reduced advantage, maybe about half a dozen lengths now, to Champagne Vacation has pulled its way through now to show in second. Third on the outside is Crimson Chief, followed by Luda Tillen and Fox LaBelle, four and five. Two lengths then to Hit the Button, who's in front of Definite Adair on the outside of King Gressel. A few lengths then to find Cruz and Susan Scalino, and the back marker continues to be Legacy of Dreams. So continue on the run towards the turn of the straight for the second time. And no change in the order, with Doyen to win, and Kevin Sexton in front by about three lengths or so to Champagne Vacation, and Sean O'Keefe in second. On the inside is Luda Tillen and Gavin Broder, who's followed in four by Crimson Chief, in the hands of Kieran Buckley, as they come to the first of the two flights in the straight, flight number seven on this occasion. Behind Crimson Chief, three lengths then to Fox LaBelle and Simon Torrance, who's in company with Hit the Button and Mike O'Connor. Definite Adair is next for Jordan Gainford as they jump that eighth flight, who's in company with King Gressel and Niall Moore. And behind King Gressel races Cruz and Susan, who's in front of Scalino, and getting a little bit detached to the back of the field is Legacy of Dreams and Jack Foley. On to the final circuit, six lights left to jump as they come to the first of the flights on, that, on this last circuit and the lead continues to be held by Doyen to win, lands three to four lengths in front. Of Champagne Vacation in second, gap of some four to five lengths now opening up to Crimson Dream, Crimson Chief back in third with Fox LaBelle on that one's outside. The inside rail is held by Luda Tillen. They're followed by Hit the Button and Cruz and Susan with just in front of that King Gressel, definite Adair on the outside, a few lengths to Scalino, and a, an ever-widening gap back to the back marker Legacy of Dreams. At the flight five from the finish, and over it. Doyen to win, has re-established his advantage and gone on now by, in fact, has probably a bigger advantage now than it's had at any time, at any point of the race, about 15 lengths clear. Of Champagne Vacation in second, Lou in third on the inside of Fox LaBelle four. Three lengths then to Crimson Chief, hit the button, King Gressel, Cruz and Susan, definite Adair, a few lengths to Scalino, and beginning to get tailed off now is Legacy of Dreams. But halfway down the back straight, inside the final three quarters of a mile, and racing towards the flight, which is four from the finish. And Doyen to win, just a little bit awkward at it, but is out 15 to 20 in front of Champagne Vacation giving chase in second. Luda to lend third, Fox LaBelle four. As they come to the third last, at least Doyen to win does and is well clear of Champagne Vacation, Luda Tillen, Cruz and Susan making ground, King Gressel makes progress on the inside of Fox LaBelle and they've gone away from hit the button, Crimson Chief has weakened, been passed by Definite Adair and then Scalino. Heading inside the final half mile and towards the turn into the straight and Doyen to win, still out clear for Kevin Sexton. 
And no sign really of the chasing group making any inroads into the lead at this stage. Is about 15 to 20 lengths in front of Champagne Vacation, Fox LaBelle, Cruz and Susan, King Gressel next, Luda Tulane has dropped back. But racing towards the turn of the straight, Doyen to win. Now the gap begins to get a little bit tighter as Champagne Vacation has closed maybe to within a dozen to 15 lengths in second but there's plenty of work to do to close on this leader as they head into the straight inside the final quarter mile and towards the second last Doyen to win out clear jumps it slightly awkwardly but still well clear and surely has an unassailable advantage now Luda Tulane has moved into second giving chase Fox LaBelle is in third four is Champagne Vacation who's cried enough and then King Gressel but down to the final flight is Doyen to win who jumps it clear Luda Tulane has closed to about eight lengths as the race inside the final 50 yards Doyen to win out on his feet a little bit out in front. Luda Tulane is closing rapidly as they run to the line. Doyen to win on the near side. Luda Tulane and possibly gets up Luda Tulane from Doyen to win in second. They finish well clear of Fox LaBelle in third. Fourth was King Gressel and then Crimson Chief Champagne Vacation and Scalino. Dramatic finish. Well, we've just seen a dramatic finish there with Luda Tulane just about getting up in the dying strides to provide Owen Griffin with a good winner. Owen, I'm sure you had palpitations watching that did you i did don but i uh, thanks and uh yeah look we'll, we'll call it a well-timed run don <laughs> but uh i can tell you turn out of the back straight and turn turn for home there uh i i wasn't feeling that confident now but uh looks was great i mean it was an exciting finish you know but yeah. christ coming down <laughs> to second last you couldn't see and it looked like the leader had slipped the field and but you know, this track here, since they switched around, it's a staying track and it takes takes a lot to get up home there from the turn for home. And once he hit top gear there, he sure he was flying. But look, he was in front where it mattered anyway. So we were happy and uh, and delighted for the owners because this horse has had a whole series of little niggly problems there over the last 18 months or so. And it would have been very easy for them to pull the plug on him. But they, they, they've stuck with him and... To be honest with you, they spent a lot of money on them, veterinary fees and that. And uh, as I said, it was a whole heap of just little niggly things. But he was on antibiotics and medication for a long time. And I just I had to pull the plug on him and give him a good break. And he was running a real nice race in Gorn the last day, first run back. And um, he got caught up in a couple of horses fell in front of him at the at the last. And Michael Michael O'Sullivan got on seat now. It's unkind calling it an unseat because he had no chance of staying on. But he he looked like he'd been third that day, so it would have been a real nice run back, and we, you know. But I to say like he the horse was in super. He was jumping out of his skin at home, but was afraid of my life at the ground. And you know, look, it was obvious he handled it all right now, but we we just didn't know whether he handled it or not. But. Um, Looked as great anyway, it worked out. And, and the ground aside, did you think you had him in good form coming here? Because he was nice and solid in the market beforehand. Oh, look, he was... I couldn't, to be honest, I couldn't see him being beaten if he handled the ground. Yeah. And um, he was... He's leaping out of his skin at home. So, look, it is, it is not too often, you know, you go, you, you'd be that confident. But, like, he was in super order. And, uh, look, sure, hopefully he can go on now and pick something else up. And, and on the positive side, like he showed a really good attitude because once he landed over the last, you could see him, he was really willing, wasn't he? Ah, yeah, look, uh, as I said, uh, it, it, it was actually, I was prepping him for a race down here in 21, um, around uh, Paddy's Day, it's a race down here, or meeting Paddy's Day, isn't it, down here? And uh, we were prepping him for a race down here when he had the first of his little mishaps. And... Uh, from the, from then on, it's just been a whole litany of little things, you know. So he's, but he has a great constitution, you know. Now, and so look, he's he he, he does he look he does he tries his he tries his heart out, you know. And as I said, look, we were he's jumping out of his skin at home. So I said we we'd run him even though I wasn't confident about the ground. And, and now that he's handled the ground, does that open up options? Do you think he can keep going now during the winter? I sure it does. I mean, you know, we're coming into winter ground now, so, um, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll keep kicking on with him anyway, and hopefully he might pick up one or two more of them. And he'll jump a fence then next year, hopefully. <laughs> and do you have many in there for the winter run? Uh, look, we we have we 15 in training, but there's only there's six there that are ready to run, you know. So, um, yeah, look, we've small numbers, you know, not like what we used to have a few years ago now. But you look, we're enjoying it and keep the head down and, you know, you never know what's around the corner. A few more of those with uh, good tonics. Yeah, yeah, you know, so look, 
really enjoy the wins now, you know. So, um, yeah, but sure, it looks great, yeah. Well done. Okay, thanks very much, Dan.